Hello everyone, I'm Kim and welcome to my sewing room. If you haven't visited my channel before, it's just about me showing you what I have made through the week and what I plan to make going forward. Primarily I make clothes, I make things for the home, I do some knitting and quilting, uh, dabble a little bit with tapestry, uh, but basically I'm up for anything that piques my creative curiosity, I'll have a go at. For those of you that do subscribe, welcome back, it's lovely to see you again. So I'm going to start this video off with what I've what I've got on. Now this is a Sewing Revival fan tail sweatshirt and it's one of my Make Nine challenges. So I'm going to stand up and show you what it looks like. So first of all it has a um, wide round um, neckline. Uh, straightforward no bust because it's stretch knit it um, fits over the bust has long sleeves with cuffs um, but it has this lovely detail in the front so it has um, a piece of wide elastic in the front which pulls this front section um, and concertines all the fabric and then from that it um, the hemline just falls away and then it it dips down slightly at the back. I have made this in a stretch knit and for some reason I don't know why at the moment I seem to be making things that are a little bit too big for me. I put some weight on and um, I've gone a little bit um, crazy with my measurements because my bust size hasn't changed but um, when I put on weight my, my arms get a little bit bigger and my bum gets bigger and then I, I think god I need to go up so I seem to go up like one two three, even three sizes so I've gone a little bit mad um, but this sweatshirt even though I will wear it it is definitely too big and I keep forgetting that my um, shoulders are narrower than the rest of me and I mentioned it like a hundred times but still I forget it so when I make things up I still forget um, I need to probably downsize on the shoulders so I've made this in a UK 18 which is a US 14 and I do intend to make it again because um, this fabric that I bought was from, it was a company called Col Colville who um, don't operate anymore and um, I bought three metres of this for 12 quid so it wasn't that expensive. So it was a great fabric to use out trying this pattern out and through making this um, top I've realised that I need to sort of downsize uh, for the neckline so it's a raglan sleeve so I need to sort of just take some of the um, fullness out of the top the sleeves are just really really long and they're very loose um, they're okay um, I mean it's obviously that's what they should be like but I do like my um, my cuffs to feel uh, Get, I like to fill them against the skin, I like them a bit snugger, so I might um, change that feature when I make this again. Um, the other thing I might do, well I'm definitely going to do, is I'm going to change the width of the elastic. Now on the paper pattern, so I put a drawing of um, the front of this sweatshirt pattern up so you can see the front and the the drawing is quite dramatic and I, for some reason when I was making this up, I thought the elastic would probably be, you know, three inches wide, but it's not. And I thought I'm going to change the, the pattern so I can use a wider piece of elastic in it. So that's, that's my intention. So I'm hoping to make this again this week and I intend to use um, this fabric here. Now I bought this fabric a few 
uh, months ago. When did I buy it? I bought this back in November last year, so I've not had it that long. But I bought it from a company called myfabrics.co.uk and I also bought some other fabric from them. The bright orange sweatshirt fabric that I made the Kennedy hoodie out of and the that Kennedy hoodie I wear it all the time it's a beautiful sweatshirt fabric and that sweatshirt has turned out really well and I know that this fabric is of the same um, composition so the composition of this is 90% cotton 5% poly and 5% spandex so it's quite a high cotton content and because of that spandex um, in it it's got it's got a stretch but it's got a really nice recovery it feels firm and it's um, brushed cotton so it's got a nice um, fluffy back to it and the the front of it I don't know whether you can see very well but you can see there are little um, navy orange and yellow specks in it so um i will be making my second fantail sweatshirt out of this now i've got two meters of this and the pattern told me that i would need 2.2 meters of fabric and it's the same width as what i use this for and i i have found that um sometimes if you cut things out singularly you can get more out of your fabric so when I was cutting this fabric out I managed to only use up one 1.75 meters of this fabric instead of the 2.2 meters that they said that I would need so I managed to save quite a bit of fabric just by cutting it out singularly and folding the fabric in a way that I would get more out of my fabric so I know with that other sweatshirt fabric I would be able to get this pattern out quite easily so I'm going to do that for next week and hopefully I get it finished and you'll see um, the tweaks that I've made to the design but I really do like that front um, elasticated um, hemline so we'll see how I get on with that as you all know I trace my patterns out so I filmed myself tracing the, the fantail pattern out so I've traced it out and I videoed it for you and I'm going to show you that next week and because I want to make changes to that pattern I have also incorporated those changes so you will see me change this pattern so it incorporates some of the um, amended features. So I'm going to reduce down on the the shoulders. I'm going to put a bigger piece of elastic. So I'm just going to show you how I make those changes on the paper pattern. So you'll see um, that process. Right. So I have received my fabric bundle from from lovely Jubbly, who provide the fabric for my Queen of Diamonds quilt. So they have sent me a package. Russell, Russell. Um, and I haven't opened it so this is um, a month 10 and as you know I get these parcels these little bundles every month to work on the next set of blocks for the Queen of Diamonds quilt and um, so I know basically what I'm going to get in my package so I know that I'm going to get the fabrics to make up this this diamond this diamond oh just the two of them just two this month um so they're the two diamonds that they've sent me the fabric for so i'm just going to open it quickly so bear with me a bit of rustling so as usual my list of fabrics um that they've sent and oh god tulip pink i say this every time tulip pink's fabrics are absolutely delicious they are so vibrant and i oh, i just love them i mean look at that isn't that beautiful so stripes 
stripes in purple, stripes in green, pom-poms. I don't know what that's called, what's that called? Uh, Geo, baby Geo. More stripes. Hippos. and um, some mini stripes. So I've got a nice selection of um, fabrics there. So now I've opened that, I can crack on with um, making those blocks up. So hopefully you will see those um, very soon. Right, so that's my Queen of Diamonds quilt. So Last week I had a little bit of a dilemma because I wanted to start using up some of my scrap fabric and I had this um, idea after I bought the uh, Mila Fiore Quilt 4 book by William Hammerstein and I had picked a um, quilt out that I liked and the plan was that I would make up some rosettes using um, my scrap fabric because I've got a lot of scrap fabric and quite a lot of that has come from the Queen of Diamonds quilt that I've been working on and I thought it would be really nice to maybe use some of that in this this um, raindrops is it raindrops or falling on my head quilt so I started uh, making the rosettes I made three rosettes last week and um, I realised whilst making them that they needed actually quite a lot of fabric because I was fussy cutting them to make out make up the the rosettes and it did actually need quite a lot of fabric and I realized that I probably wouldn't get those rosettes out of all of my scrap fabric so I, I've ummed and ahed about what am I going to do so thank you for your comments because I've taken them on board and I have made a decision that I'm going to carry on with the quilt but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it really really slowly because uh, I didn't really want to purchase fabric because that defeated the object so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make up rosettes as and when I find the fabric even if it comes in from the Queen of Diamonds leftovers or other things that I order in the future so this is going to be a really slow project so I I made up another one this week so this is um, another rosette yet again this is from Tula Pink so I found some um, scrap fabric in my box and made up uh, that rosette so I really like that so um, I'm going to continue with it because I have enjoyed making these rosettes but because I will be finishing the Queen of Diamonds quilt soon because the, the hand sewing bit of it is going to be finished in a couple of months and I was looking at doing a, an, a new quilt because I wanted to carry on doing the, the EPP, the, the hand sewing in the evening and, um, and that's when I decided to pick one out of the um, Mila Fiore Quilts 4 book but because I'm obviously not going to have all the fabric to do that it suddenly dawned on me that I do have a quilt already in my sewing room I have a kit already in my sewing room that I could just literally get on with so I'm going to show you. I have mentioned this quilt before um, because I have been buying fabric for it um, as I've been going along and it's this one it's the Dreamcatcher quilt and I have been buying um, fabric for it when I every so often when I've needed fabric for something else I've gone off and also added a little bit more to my cart um, with the fabric suggestions that this quilt has recommended and I've got this pile of fabric here um, that I can be you know getting on with um, so my kids bought me this um, kit uh, quite a while ago a few years back now and in this kit I have all of the paper pieces and also have all of the acrylics to cut the fabric out so it just seems really silly to not use it because I have built up 
um, all of this fabric. I mean, and with Tulip Pink, um, the reason why I bought it is because Tulip Pink has this habit of um, she stops some of her um, printing of fabric, so you find that after a while they go out of print and you can't get hold of them. So I, that's the reason why I bought. Uh, I've been buying this fabric for a while because this one in particular I really struggled to find this this is from her line work um, range um, and I really struggled to find this but I have found some and, and I've got enough for um, this quilt so I've got the, the black and white pom-poms the stripe um, some of her fabrics from her curiouser and curiouser range. Uh, I think this is from her um, daydream. I think it's called daydream. Her daydream range. So I do have, you know, quite a bit of fabric. So I got all excited because now I can start a quilt knowing that I have ample fabric to get myself going on it. And I have also decided that what I want to do is because I'm going to do this quilt from start to finish, uh, I'm going to also take you on this journey, but I'm going to do it as a separate video. So I'm going to keep the construction, you know, the start of this quilt, my thought process, um, everything to do with this quilt I'm going to do it as separate videos so that those that are into quilting and enjoy um, watching quilting videos can watch that and those of you that don't aren't interested in quilting you won't have to listen to me waffle on about quilting so I'm going to do this as separate videos so that will be coming shortly right so my sewing plans for next week so as mentioned before, I'm going to make another fantail sweatshirt using that beautiful pink sweatshirt fabric. So I've got that um, ready to start as soon as I finish this video. And I also want to do something that I haven't done before, and that is join a, a sewing challenge. So every so often, somebody from the sewing community will... Um, release a challenge and there's one that has um, piqued my interest and it's called So Frugal and I hope I've got that right if I haven't I'll put underneath um, the correct name of it and it's basically where you use a free pattern and I've been looking at free patterns and I think I've found one that I like and also using fabric from your stash which is great for me because I have lots of fabric in my stash and as you know, those of you who have visited my channel many times will know that I'm desperately trying to get my fabric stash down. So I have a lot, a lot of fabric to pick from. So um, I'm going to join in with one of these challenges. So hopefully you will see the result of that in a future video. And I, I think that's it for today. So I hope you all um, have enjoyed the content. Any comments, please leave them down below and I will see you all very soon. Take care.